So it's been sweltering hot in Los Angeles the past few days and I don't have uh, air conditioning. So, not been sleeping that well. Not getting as much exercise as I'd like. Taken pretty solid hit to my productivity. And so, I have reasons to grouch if I wanted to, if I wanted to grouch. But, uh, Obviously, that's a, a lousy way to approach your life. Nobody likes to be around a grouch. It's no fun being a grouch. And having a grouchy approach to life, it doesn't put you in, in a position to take advantage of opportunities and to enjoy your day. And when you're not in a happy place other people find you a drag to be around you're not as productive and uh, your life just kind of shrinks down you just see fewer possibilities you get fixated on what's not working so who wants to be a grouch so one of my favorite weapons against grouchiness is I love to keep a gratitude journal. I just love to write in my journal everything that I'm feeling grateful for. One of them is that I drive a luxury car. I love it. This is my first luxury car and it's just so much fun. It's powerful. It's fast. It's safe. It's quiet, smooth, just move the steering wheel and boom, tap the accelerator, take off. I love where I live, love being in Pico Robertson, the, the heart of, one of the two hearts of Orthodox Judaism in Los Angeles, and it has a whole different vibe than the other major uh, Orthodox Jewish community. Pika Robertson is uh, it's, it's much more mo modern, probably much more upbeat. Not, not quite as uh, religiously serious by and large as uh, Fairfax La Brea. Come on, buddy, let's go. I got Torah to teach. So I love where I live. I love the beautiful view. I have a lot of space and I'm near all the kosher stores, kosher restaurants, orthodox synagogues, near my friends, it's a branch of the Los Angeles Public Library, I'm right beside Beverly Hills there's, there's a great park and uh, there's the Beverly Hills Public Library about a couple of miles away. So I just start listing off everything that I'm grateful for. Like I'm grateful for my neighbors that uh, they're very rarely loud and disruptive. I'm grateful for my YouTube channel, the opportunity to share my ideas with hundreds of people and make some money at the same time. I'm grateful for my clients for earning a solid income tickling the old six figures for the first time in my life. Grateful for my 12-step programs, my sponsor. I've got a uh, terrific uh, psychotherapy center just a little over a mile away from where I live. I need psychotherapy. So I've got terrific physical therapists close to where I live. If uh, I got the old aches and pains that I can't solve myself with my activator. And I have not had to go to traditional physical therapy in the past, whoa, one year, two, one and a half years. So that's awesome. I uh, used to have to go on a regular basis for plantar fasciitis, but I found a, a, a tip for an exercise to do in the New York Times. And so my feet no longer trouble me. 
that was an on again off again problem for since year 2000 so that's countless doctors visits physical therapy visits acupuncture visits thousands of dollars in expenses problems completely gone just know the exercises to do every day problems not likely to return so it's important for me to make a list of all these things that I'm grateful for and when I do it just immediately picks up my mood like oh yeah this is awesome in my life and that's awesome in my life and you know, I love these supplements that I found that give me an extra boost and uh, help me digest better and uh, help me sleep better and so I found supplements and uh, I'm grateful for my friends many of whom live nearby I'm grateful for my shuls I go to several different synagogues and uh, I love being part of my Orthodox Jewish community. I love the opportunity to be, to be of service. I, I volunteer uh, a few hours a week and, and that feels good to be able to give back to the Orthodox Jewish community that's taken me in and uh, adopted me and made me part of the tribe. So I like being 52. I mean, I'm in good health, accumulated some wisdom on how to live and uh, pretty much every day I get up and I look forward to the day. When I go to bed at night, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. That's my definition of happiness to you. If you look forward to tomorrow. If you look forward to tomorrow, you're happy. If you don't look forward to tomorrow, you're not happy. A lot of people say, I don't know what happiness is. There's no definition for happiness. I don't understand. It's just amorphous. It's, uh, to me, it's very concrete you look forward to tomorrow if you look forward to tomorrow you're happy if there are things that you want to accomplish ways that you want to grow things you want to develop things you want to learn things you want to give things you want to share new experiences new challenges if you want to take on all these things that equals happiness so one of the things that I do regularly in my morning routine and the first two and a half hours of my morning is just mapped out T don't take in any news don't check my email I just uh, first two and a half hours is devoted to getting spiritually right for, for the day ahead uh, getting physically right so I'm free in my body you don't see me with a lot of weird tension patterns or a lot of you know constriction in my movement uh, you know, disab disabling compression patterns or you know, just limbs that are stuck or stiff because uh, I take care of myself particularly in those first couple of hours of the day and part of my morning routine is to talk to people in my various 12-step programs and uh, sometimes we just exchange gratitudes call someone up, you don't have a lot of time, she'll say, well, give me three things that you're grateful for. And uh, that can have an impact that goes beyond just writing them in my journal, like sharing them with someone else and hearing her reaction. Uh, that's important, getting out of isolation, like underrunning, uh, deading, these are diseases of isolation, of vagueness, of failure to connect. Like all good things in my life have come through my connections to other people. All the, the greatest stories that I've ever written on my blog, pretty much they've all come from a uh, connection with other people. They've tipped me off to something or given me insights or just by the process of talking back and forth with them, uh, I, I've achieved clarity or insights that, that I then wanted to share. So pretty much all good things, or, or paychecks, or, or money, or, or love, or human connection, or feeling of community, uh, comes through uh, other people. So I connect with other people be before I get started on work. We share gratitudes, 
uh, we share action plans. And what actions do we want to take today? And for me, the, those first few hours of the day are most important because my willpower starts running down as the day goes on. By, by 10 a.m., I don't have the willpower that I had at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m. Uh, I get a little boost in my willpower after I eat, but uh, 2, 3, 4 in the afternoon is not as strong as it was at 9 or 10 in the morning. And uh, by 7, 8 p.m., uh, I'm pretty much ready to start winding down on the day. So anything I want to get done, I, most difficult things, I need to tackle them first off, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and uh, sometimes I, I find it helpful to talk to an action partner or someone in my program about the things that I want to accomplish. And uh, particularly things that I'm struggling with. There, there are still things such as learning technology that cause me anxiety, <laughs> rage, and despair. That's my typical reaction to uh, having to learn new technology. So, I find it tremendously calming to talk to other people about this problem or, or anything like that. Uh, I, I, I just like talking to other people about the 12 steps, about the tools in our program. It, it gets me more excited about my, my 12 step program if I can talk to other people who are similarly committed. And there's a frequent saying in, in 12 step meetings, you want to stick with the winners. So, you can usually tell the state of somebody's recovery by the sound of their voice. If they're hesitant, if their voice is strangled, if, it's, if their voice sounds tight and small and tiny and frightened and fragile, usually that means they're not in a good place and usually it means that they're not uh, working their 12-step program with, uh, with a high degree of, of commitment. So as you would expect in 12-step programs, you'll find a lot of people who are depressed and, uh, and whiny and uh, just uh, looking to, to vent about their problems. You don't want those people as action partners. You don't want those people calling you up and I, like I've had people call me up and say, oh, I don't know how to buy a car or you know, I have had this problem with my skin or, you know, I'm getting bullied at work and uh, uh, you know, I'm having frustrations in my relationships and uh, you know, I, I can't get this woman to go out with me. And, yeah, people will take up my time with all these things. And so I've got to be very clear that that's not what we're about, particularly in the morning. This is not a gripe session. This is not a moaning session. This is not a grouch session. This is a session to share gratitude, to share action plans, to share how you're working the program. Like, it's commitments to action, and uh, it's commitment to the, the 12 steps, the, the tools, the, the program, the, the community, to the, to the way of life of recovery. That's what I want to get first thing in the morning. I don't want to hear people's problems that they're stuck in, because for most of our problems, if our problems were our problem, we just solve them because we're smart enough. I, I got an IQ over 120. I, I'm smart enough to solve my problems if my problems were really my problems. But my problems aren't my problems. They're just symptoms of deeper issues. Of uh, they're, they're, they're flashing hints that I need to work my program with more diligence. They're symptoms of you know, my refusal to turn over my whole life to God. The symptoms of my refusal to, okay, I'm going to turn over my love life to God. I'm going to turn over my sex life to God. I'm not going to do anything sexually that God would not endorse. I'm going to turn over my work life, my earning life to God. I'm not going to earn money in any way that God would not endorse. Okay, as long as I conduct myself the way I drive, the way I speak, in a way that I think God would endorse, then uh, I don't seem to get into any trouble. I, I get along with other people. 
I don't have uh, gratuitous conflict and I stay out of feuds and I stay out of rage and resentment and, and my life just goes smoothly and so when I run into trouble it's uh, usually when I'm not turning over part of my life or all of my life to God I'm just acting on my basic instincts because I'm scared because I think oh now I'll, I'll give my sex and love life to God but uh, as far as my desire to trigger other people and the things I say as far as uh, comes to making jokes that's just for me I don't have to turn over my desire to provoke to God then obviously I, I'm going to run into trouble if, uh, if I think oh, I don't need to turn over my earning life to God I've, I've got this sorted out on my own then, then I run into trouble so one of the things I do is I often carry around uh, 12 steps 12 tools 12 traditions and just look at them. Like go back to step one. Realize that uh, you know my love life is out of control. That whatever it takes to make uh, sound choices in in the realm of uh, romance, that power does not reside within me. <laughs> and I can just look at my my history of failures in that regard. Okay, I need God in that respect. Or I can uh, look at my checking account balance and see that uh, whatever power it takes to create prosperity, that power doesn't really reside with me because when I do things my way, it doesn't seem to work out. Or if I'm feeling lonely, particularly lonely in a crowd, I can think, wow, whatever power it requires to uh, get along with other people, and to live in peace and harmony with my community. That power does not reside in me. I have to ask God for help. And I have to surrender my own best thinking.